Now, as many of you would know, former Prime Minister Tony Abbott and Peter Credlin have started a new podcast series for Sky News where they tackle the big issues of the day and the big issues of our era, whether it's the voice, the rise of identity politics or the decline of Western civilization and the triumph of neo-Marxism. It's a must-listen and former PM, the Honourable Tony Abbott, joins me now. Tony, your fourth podcast with Peter Credlin has been been released. It's great stuff. You discuss a key principle that not too long ago was celebrated by both sides of politics, a notion highlighted by a Martin Luther King Jr., who said he had a dream that his children would live in a nation where they would not be judged by the colour of their skin, but by the content of their character. And I think it's sad that the principle that decent people have been fighting for for centuries, uh, the equal treatment of everyone, regardless of race, regardless of gender, regardless of colour, regardless of religion, that everyone should have the same rights and responsibility, everyone should have the same dignity and equal treatment, mm. regardless of characteristics that are immutable, that you can't change. Uh, this has been a wonderful ideal. Tony, why and how has the West lost sight of this uh, most important principle? Rita, we've seen the rise of identity politics whereby uh, people are seen as being parts of large groups uh, whose life is predetermined by factors beyond their control as opposed to being seen as individuals with their own agency. And the basic problem is that this neo-Marxist push has been insufficiently resisted by people who should know better. Tony, it seems these days we have a uh, black armband view that is pushed relentlessly mm. on young Australians, uh, one that has no nuance, no grace, no appreciation of all that has been created for all of us in a relatively short period of time. Exactly right, Rita. Uh, Australia is the least racist and the most colourblind society on earth. And yet, instead of appreciating uh, all of the things that have been achieved here, we are constantly flagellating ourselves over the sins of the past. Now, the past is not perfect, uh, but the past has enabled us to achieve everything that we have today. And if we remember the past, and we build on our strengths, tomorrow can be even better. But if we're constantly denigrating the past and by implication ourselves, um, that's a recipe for bitterness, for recrimination, for division, for disunity. And I just think we need to wake up to ourselves, uh, to wake up to the good as well as to the bad in all of us. Absolutely, because we have created a generation that is self-loathing. It's so unhealthy. It's not only ignorance of, of the true history, but it's this uh, lack of pride in the country. And that, I think, it can be a quite a destructive thing. We spoke earlier in the program about a native title claim from an Aboriginal land council over land adjacent to Balmoral Beach. There's a claim that the area's wealth was partially built on slavery. Uh, what's your response to that? Well, I think that's BS, uh, frankly. It's just BS. <laughs> now, um, the last thing we need is to have uh, some change in effective control uh, of what is currently uh, parkland within the area of Mossman Council, uh, a change in effective control that means that people all people, regardless of their ancestry, uh, have equal access uh, without cost or without inhibition to that land. Uh, but the only point, I suppose, of transferring control from the council to some Indigenous group would be to start having the kind of restrictions that we've already seen on people wanting to, uh, uh, I suppose, explore Uluru or Ayers Rock uh, the kind mm. of restrictions that we've seen on people who want to climb Mount Warning, the kind of restrictions that are threatened for things like yep. the Grampians in Victoria. This is the last thing we need. We need to go forward uh, as a country 
uh, one equal people together. Um, but uh, all of these divisive and disruptive claims are getting in the way of that. Now, before we go, it's the 10-year anniversary today of your landslide election win. It came after a dark period for the coalition, it's got to be said. You'll remember back in 2007, 2008, Labor was not only in power federally, but in every single state and territory, similar to what we have now. Not quite as bad right now for the coalition. Mm. Uh, what does the coalition of 2023 need to do to win in a landslide like you did 10 years ago? Well, plainly, Rita, what we need to do is to create a contest. We've got to create a contest uh, with the government which is letting us down in significant respects. That's what I did in the build-up to the 2013 election. Uh, that's what we need to do now. And I've got to say good on Peter Dutton and his team for creating a very clear contest over the voice. And the fact that uh, mm. if opinion polls are to be believed, support for the voice has dropped from about 70% to about 40%, it shows that Liberals can win arguments if we are prepared to have them. Absolutely. When we have got what we believe is a good case and a good argument, we should go forward into the public arena with that and we can change issues which are currently apparently unpopular uh, to make them popular. Mm. Now, I think that there are a few other areas where uh, we could do this. Uh, energy policy is a classic case. But yes. uh, uh, coalition supporters should take great heart from the fact that at least on this absolutely emblematic issue, um, we appear to be winning the arguments and in the process to be converting the public from one perspective to a different and better perspective.